So, Bob? Mushroom is like this giant puffball. Okay, and the first mushroom I ever identified was this swillless mushroom. They grow symbiotically with pine trees, and I grew up on a pine plantation in central Illinois. As I learned, swillless is horrible if you fry it in butter, but if you cook it in water, it makes a great cream soup. The next mushroom to have a major impact on me is the morel. Morels have made and lost me more money and friends than any other. <laughs> For over 30 years, I spent every spring in a patch of burned out forest looking for them and trying to hike them out over the trees and logs and rivers and stuff. I met the most mysterious and legendary of mushrooms, Amanita muscaria, in children's books, ancient Vedic scriptures, and in Christmas legends about a red-robed dwarf who climbs down chimneys, called the fly agaric, because it's known to cause reindeer to fly when they eat it. The psychoactive ibotenic acid isn't technically a hallucinogen, but it certainly causes a state of acute perceptual distortion and is eliminated chemically unchanged in the urine, explaining accounts of early Christians eating the body and drinking the blood of Christ the mushroom. A smell like apricot. Chanterelle. Dig the awesome flavor I got. Chanterelle. They make everything special. So truffle is a term for fungi that fruit underground. As you see, this truffle has been chewed by insect larvae and gnawed by rodents that are attracted to the sex pheromone aromas. Truffles never emerge from the soil, but they're dug up by the creatures that eat them. The Western Mike Montana Mycological Association members have been growing oyster mushrooms since this workshop in 1993. After growing spores on sterilized grain, we mix the spawn with the straw like this, put them in plastic bags, take them home, where they grow into mushrooms. But oyster mushrooms and certain other fungi have a secret power. They feed by secreting powerful peroxidase enzymes into their surroundings. The same peroxidase bleaches the hyphae white as it breaks down the wood and toxic urea formaldehyde in this particle board. 300 million years ago, conifer-like plants began producing resins like lignin here, a mashup of weird chemical compounds that was impossible to break down with the enzymes that existed. For 60 million years that went on until fungi evolved the enzymes that are needed to break down these lignans and petroleum as well. Using mushrooms like this, Tremetes, we're able to break down uh, polluted problems like this uh, petroleum pond that you see in the background uh, in Ecuador. Uh, so despite opposition from petroleum producers, uh, citizens like Donald Moncayo here and groups like Amazon Renewal established several test plots like this using waste wood, bamboo, and oyster mushroom spawn. The plots were later bulldozed by trespassing petroleum contractors. After 10 years of surveying mushrooms in Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador, I published this field guide with my associate uh, Daniel Winkler. Here we identify 80 of the most common and notable mushrooms in the upper Amazon, like this Pena del Diablo, the stinkhorn. Stinkhorns have a unique relationship with insects, these unusually shaped mushrooms <laughs> attract insects because they produce cadaverin. Okay, cadaverin is also found in rotting carcasses. The gooey greenish gleba sticks to their little feet and gets a free ride to the next insect attraction. But not all mushrooms are friends of insects. These cordyceps kill and eat their insect host. I found these in Tibet in 1987. A guy over in the market's going, psst, 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 come over here. So I went over and I said, what does it do? What is it? He says, 
it's a, it's a mushroom. And I says, what, do you, what is it? And he goes, I said, I bought them all. <laughs> okay. A year, a year later, I'm walking down a road by my house in Japan, and I've met the reishi, the mushroom of immortality, growing in this greenhouse. Each one of these little boxes went for 100 bucks. This is a very big medicine, uh, very popular in Japan. And Robert Rogers published accounts of Canadian First Nations people using this same mushroom about the same time that I published accounts of this being used as a tea that stopped fever by indigenous people in Bolivia. It's now in the turkey tail group of mushrooms. Yaddy, yaddy. And you know this Everybody's one. Everybody's ready to party. <laughs> when you've got those silly side mushrooms. Magic mushrooms have a little bit of an image problem. <laughs> Psilocybin, the serotonin chemi mimicking chemical in these mushrooms, can cause inebriation and hysteria in doses over two grams. Outlawed in the 1960s, psilocybin is on a fast track status by the FDA to address a list of psychosomatic disorders, including insomnia, PTSD spectrum, depression, anxiety, Crohn's if syndrome, MS, criminalized nature no is working to help. <laughs> okay, this is a little collaborative effort between myself and a bunch of dendroctinous beetles. They did the lines and I put the color in. All right, so, and, and that's it. I think this has helped me see 